video will cover the topic, finding the x-intercepts and vertex of a parabola. Parabolas are the graphs that result from quadratic equations, right? That's right. When we look at parabolas, two important defining characteristics are x-intercepts and the vertex. An x-intercept is the x-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the x-axis. A parabola can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts. A parabola has zero x-intercepts if it never touches or crosses the x-axis. A parabola has one x-intercept if it only touches the x-axis. A parabola has two x-intercepts if it crosses the x-axis twice. At each point where a graph touches or crosses the x-axis, the y-coordinate is zero. To find the x-intercepts of a parabola, we let y equal 0 and solve the resulting quadratic equation. Can we look at this in the context of an example problem? Sure. Let's try finding the x-intercepts and coordinates of the vertex for the parabola y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. First, we set y equal to 0, leaving us to solve for x in order to find the x-intercepts. We can factor the quadratic expression on the right side in order to solve for x, right? Right. So to factor this, we need to determine what two numbers multiply to 7 and add to 8. That would be 1 and 7, right? Because 1 times 7 is 7, and 1 plus 7 is 8. Exactly. This means our two factors are x plus 7 and x plus 1. Now we can set each factor equal to 0, and when we solve for x, we get x equals negative 7 or x equals negative 1. So the two x-intercepts for this parabola are negative 7 and negative 1. This means that the parabola intersects the x-axis at the points negative 7, 0 and negative 1, 0. This means that the parabola must look like one of the following since it could open either up or down. In either case, the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. This means that the x-coordinate of the vertex lies midway between negative 7 and negative 1. Because of this, we can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by using the midpoint formula. To find the x-coordinate of our vertex, which will be the midpoint, we will substitute negative 7 in for x1 and negative 1 in for x2. This leaves us with negative 7 plus negative 1 divided by 2. When we simplify, we get negative 4 as the x-coordinate of our vertex. Now that we've found our x-coordinate, negative 4, we can substitute this into our original equation, y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7, to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. This leaves us with negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4, plus 7. When we simplify, we get negative 9 as the y-coordinate of our vertex. Now that we have both the x and y-coordinate of the vertex, we know that the vertex has coordinates negative 4, comma, negative 9. Now that we know the x-intercepts and the coordinates of the vertex of our parabola, we have a good idea of what the graph looks like, right? We do. We can see what the graph looks like by drawing our parabola based on the information we determined. We can see from the graph that the parabola opens up, which makes sense because the coefficient of the x squared term is positive. This understanding helps us check our work. Okay, so to find the x-intercepts of a parabola, we set y equal to 0 and solve for x. This process often involves factoring. Then, to find the vertex of the parabola, we use the midpoint formula to determine the x-coordinate exactly midway between the two x-intercepts. From here, we can substitute this x-value into the original quadratic equation to solve for the y-coordinate of the vertex. That all sounds great. It seems like you're really getting the hang of this topic. 